I wish to welcome you to this episode of lesson. I know we, as of our previous lesson, we discuss or we are about to discuss isotope. So we have isotope. Just like as I rightly said in our previous lesson, isotope or rather in adjective, you call it isotope. Isotope. An isotope is a kind of phenomenon used to describe an existence of an element with the same atomic number but different mass number. Just as we discussed during our previous lesson when I was there teaching about electronic configuration, the existence of an element and other ones. So just like we have an isotope, isotopy, a phenomenon used to describe an existence of an element with the same atomic number but different mass number. Now that is to say when you consider this isotope or isotopy, there is occurrence of an element in an abundant. Now when you watch that of John Dalton atomic theory number two, when which was disproved by other people now you say that there is no how an element can be broke further but it was later was disproved that element can move into further or can be break into further by having what to call an existence of an element with different mass number with the same atomic number and different mass number for example we have something like chlorine Chlorine has a mass number of 37 and 17. Another chlorine has the mass number of 35 and 17. The same atomic number, but different mass number. Understand that the atomic number, as I told you in our previous lesson, is the number of the proton present in the nucleus of an atom of an element the number of the proton present in the nucleus of an atom of an element that is what we call atomic number or the number of an element according to how it is arranged in periodic table this is what we call atomic number I gave you some instance of atomic number like when you count from 20 elements the first 20 elements so all those number, number one, number two, number three, to twenty is what to call atomic number. And you will bear me witness that you will have not less than 118 existence elements. So from number one to no, number 118 is what to call the atomic number. And here now you will see chlorine and the atomic number 17 and 17. And their mass number mass number is the sum of that of proton number present in the nucleus of an atom of an element mass number is the sum and when i mean sum i mean x u m sum summation summation addition so addition of the this proton number that are present in the nucleus of an atom of an element is what to call mass number now you can see their mass number 37 of this chlorine and 35 why the atomic number is 17 and 17 that is why isotope says that it is an existence or a phenomenon used to describe the existence of an element with the same atomic number but different different mass number that is the meaning of isotope now we have oxygen let me still give you more example we have oxygen Oxygen is 16 and 8. We have oxygen 16 and 8. We have oxygen 17 and 8. This is an isotope of oxygen. We also have carbon. We also have carbon. Carbon of 12 and 6. And we have also carbon 13 and 6. This is an isotope of carbon. And the existence of this carbon in two ways with the same atomic number but different mass number we still have magnesium 
we still have other elements that occur as an isotope. So, now with that, there are calculations we normally carry out to calculate the isotope or what we call the relative atomic mass of this isotope. Now, as we have chlorine and the chlorine, a chlorine with atomic number of 17 and mass, of, mass number of 37 and chlorine of atomic number of 17 and mass number of 35. How do you calculate two of them so that two of them, the two existence of this chlorine, we have one relative atomic mass? Because there is no way if they ask you to calculate the relative atomic mass of chlorine, you will solve this one different and solve this one different. No, you don't do it like that. But now chemistry and many scientists have they have discovered that there are percentage abundance to which this will occur. Percentage abundance to which the chlorine occur. Now, like if you have this chlorine of 37 mass and atomic number of 17, we have what we call 75% abundance. Why this one? We have what we call 25% percent abundance 25 percent abundance this is their occurrence in nature now if this one that has 37 occur in 75 percent abundance and this one with 35 occur in 25 percent abundance how do you relate two of them how do you relate two of them is another problem now for me to calculate two of them I will simply say, now 75%, which is 75 over 100, times 37 over 1. That is what I'm going to do. Then I'm going to have addition plus. We have 25%, 25%, which is 25 over 100, times 35 over 1. Now, with your calculator, you can press with me, you can press with me 35, 75 times 37 divided by, divided by 100. What are you going to have? 75, I'm going to have 75 times 37 divided by 100. I'm going to have 27 point seven twenty seven point seven five plus I'm going to have again for here twenty five times thirty five twenty five times thirty five divided by one hundred I'm going to have eight point seven five now I want to add two of them together I want to add two of them together so I'm going to have 8.75 plus 27.75. I'm going to have 36.5. And this become what to call the ablative atomic mass. This become what to call the ablative atomic mass. And this relative atomic mass is the relative atomic mass of oxygen. Some cases you see it in this form in chemistry 35.5. You see it in that case. And that is the percentage abundance of oxygen. Now, even though if you do it otherwise, like when you have 75 times 35 over 100 plus you now have 25 sorry please you have 75 over 100 times 35 over 1 plus you can also say 25 over 100 times 37 let's still follow it this way in case if you do not understand this pattern. Now in this case, you still have 75 
times 35 equal to this you will give me 2 6 2 5 divided by 100 plus 25 times 37 it will give me 9 2 5 divided by 100 now 2625 Two six two five divided by one hundred will give me twenty six point two five plus nine two five divided by one hundred divided by one hundred I'm going to have nine point two five if I if I add two of them together now I'm going to have 9.25 plus 26.25 equal to, it will now give me 35.5, 35 35.5. So you can see these two pattern. Now though when you watch this one, you see that there is the, the relative atomic mass is higher. In chemistry, we have 35.5, 35.5, and that is what we have gotten here, the relative atomic mass. So relative atomic mass of chlorine becomes 35.5. On that understanding, if you want me to still prove you more right on this isotope, the existence of two an element, and the element occur in two places with the same atomic number but different mass number but how do I make it for these two elements with different mass number to have only one relative atomic mass how do I make it to have one relative atomic ma mass so the, these two chlorine of 37 and 35 has now become 35.5 as their relative atomic mass because there is no place in chemistry, even in that 20 element, where you can see chlorine to occur twice. Chlorine cannot appear twice in 20 element. It only appears one. So how they get that one is by the addition of these two, using their what we call percentage abundance. And that is what we have used to calculate this relative atomic mass. Now I can use another method. What is this method? If they want to ask you this question, they must give you their ratio of occurrence. The ratio of occurrence. And what is this ratio of occurrence? They can say that we have what to call the occurrence ratio 3 is to 1. 3 is to 1. And this 3 is to 1 means the rates or the ratio at which they occur. Now, that of 35, like as we have 35 times 30, all in brackets, plus that of 37, 1 times 37. Let's just see this pattern too, if we can still arrive at this 35.5. Now, with that, you now see, press the calculator, 30 times 35. It's going to give me 105. 105 plus 37. Plus 37 is going to give me 142. Equal to 142. Now, having gotten this 142, 3 ratio 1 or 3 is to 1 simply means 3 plus 1 and 3 plus 1 is going to give me equal to what? 4. Now since this this is their percentage uh, uh, ratio occurrence now I have added the 2 35 occur in the ratio of 3 37 occur in the ratio of 1 so because of that I have summed two of them together or have added two of them together to become 4 and the total of this their relative abundance is 142 Therefore, what they are going to do, this their relative 
occurrence 142 divided by the total number of the ratio occurrence which is 4 142 divided by 4 is equal to it will now give me 35.5 and this becomes the relative atomic mass of chlorine and that is what we call isotope an existence of an element with the same atomic number but different mass number but the truth or the fact here is that how do I make this their occurrence this their masses to become one in this place the chlorine the two chlorine has become one and they have one relative atomic mass we also have oxygen and the carbon as I told you let's quickly go to that of carbon the mass number of mass of oxygen is 16 but understand that we have what we call oxygen molecule it must be occur in this form since oxygen is 16 16 times 2 is going to give me what to what 32 that is why we always use 32 as the relative atomic mass of oxygen now let us go and know if we can use their isotope and calculate this their masses how do we use the isotope to calculate this their masses now it is believed by many scientists that there is also a percentage occurrence of this uh, oxygen now we have oxygen of 16 and 8 we also have oxygen of 17 and 8 16 and 8 and 17 and 8 now in this case I have their percentage abundance the percentage abundance of oxygen of 16 is 99.76 why the percentage of 17 is 0 0.04 that is their percentage abundance now in this their percentage abundance how do I use for my calculation you simply do what we have here so if I have 99.76 percent I quickly go to my mathematics 99.76 all over 100 times 16 I'll bracket this one and bracket this then I'm going to have my plus why that of 17 occur the percentage abundance is 0 0.04 and because of that I'm going to have 0 0.04 all over 100 times 17 over 1 I'll bracket all of them so this is what we call isotope or relative atomic mass now for me to have the relative atomic mass that you can even decide to put relative atomic mass equal to if I want to make it more mathematical then relative atomic mass is equal to 99.76 times 16 let's go by that 99.76 times 16 we are going to have 1596.16 all over 100 plus 0 0.04 times 17 equal to 0 0.68 all over 100 now in this case I'm going to add, divide both of them 1596.16 divided by 100 I'm going to have 15.96 why I'm going to have here 0 0.68 divided by 100 I'm going to have 0 0.6 0 0.68 divided by 100 I'm going to have 0 
zero six zero point zero zero six now if I add this zero point zero zero six and fifteen point nine six together because I'm still have my addition here then I'm going to have plus fifteen point nine six fifteen point nine six what am I going to have? I'm going to have fifteen point nine six. This fifteen point nine six, if you pick one, because they say if you want to do approximation, carry one, anyone that reach five, carry one, add for here. Now pick one from here and add here. So once I pick one and add to this place, it become sixteen. And this is the mass number which I told you here, the mass of oxygen. So we've calculated it using what we call isotope. We also have that of carbon. We also have that of carbon 12 and 14. We have also that of carbon which is 12 and 14. You can still use the same method to calculate that. Now I've gotten my mass, relative atomic mass of oxygen as 16. So now we can also quickly solve the third one so that when you get to other ones like argon, the tin, calcium, so on and so forth, you will be able to do that one on your own. So let me still give you another instance, then we'll proceed. So we have that of carbon. In that of carbon, we have their percentage occurrence. We also have that of carbon. That is why I say it immediately after the chlorine, oxygen, and carbon, so the rest, you will see them. Like, where you go, you must know all this, AU, which is gold. AU is a symbol of gold. You have SN, which is the symbol of tin. Then you have ZN, which is the symbol of zinc. You have AG, which is the symbol of argon. Uh, sorry, saver, the symbol of saver. And so on and so forth, and many of them. But this is the most critical one that if you see, you will be confused. Okay, you will have also PB, which is lead. Lead. So, so that when you see them, just as we have chlorine in a short, in a symbol, and have oxygen likewise on this one so when you see them and you try to know their percentage occurrence most especially when you go to essential chemistry go to the back of that essential chemistry and you see where they put some of the relative abundance and the mass and the atomic number now as we have carbon we have carbon of 12 and 6 and carbon of 14 and 6 is still talking about isotope and existence of an element element which is carbon with the same atomic number and different mass number but the fact is that they've told us that for this one first one to occur there is a percentage at which it occur during the research or the mining of what carbon so and that of carbon of 14 and 6 there is also a percentage to which it what occur like that of 12, we have 88.7%. And that of 14, we have 11.1%. This is their percentage abundance as they occur. But how do I make this two carbon to become one? To have what to call relative atomic mass. Now, understand with me, that the relative atomic mass of carbon is 12. So, if we do this calculation and we would not arrive at 12, that is to say that the percentage abundance is wrong or our calculation is wrong. Just like when you see oxygen, I told you people that the relative atomic mass of oxygen is what? 16. 16. And after our calculation, you, you can see it here, 15.96 approximately 16 so let us do the calculation of this one and know if we can arrive at 12 now in this case i'm going to have 88 
0.7%. Sorry, it's 8.7 all over 100 times 12 over 1. You now put your addition, that is plus. Then I'm going to have another one, 11.1 all over 100 times 14 over 1. So I, I have told you that if you want to make it more mathematical, you have to be putting this relative atomic mass because that is what we are looking for. Now, what I, we are going to do, relative atomic mass is equal to, you press with me, with your calculator, H8.7 times 12 will give you equal to 106. 4.4 all over 100 plus 11.1 times 14 which will give me 155.4 all over 100 now I'm going to have 1064.4 4 divided by 100 which is 100 will give me equal to 10.64 I will still put my plus addition then I will go to this side 155.4 divide or divided by 100 I am going to have 1.5 Five, four. Now this 1.554 plus 10.64 will give me what? Plus 10.64. I'm going to have equal to 12.194. That is this become the relative atomic mass this become relative atomic mass of carbon so relative atomic mass of carbon is now what 12 and you see you cannot approximate this you cannot approximate it. if you can pick one from here put here become two so automatically the answer still remain what 12 and that is why i told you that it is 12 if you do not get that 12 that is to say that you, you've made mistake in your calculation or your procedure or steps that you follow. So that is what we call isotope. And this is how to calculate the relative atomic number of what isotope. So I charge you, go back and get other ones. Go and look also for their ratio occurrence too. So that if you do mistake with this step, you can go to their ratio occurrence. Uh, they will give you the ratio of occurrence, then you have to use their ratio of occurrence to solve, to arrive at the same answer. So that is isotope. Thank you very much. If you have question, I'm waiting for you.